The kitchen is where we aim to bring cycles together so that the human being is integrated in a healthy cycle, in a healthy water cycle, in a healthy food cycle, and in a healthy energy cycle. When everything's working right, we've got food coming from the gardens. It comes in here. We're cooking with, here in this kitchen, we're cooking only with the sun and with biogas. We're using water from the wells. That means the cook who's standing in the kitchen can invite friends to come around to eat, can cook for themselves. There's, um, they can freely offer from what we have. And you don't have to have in the back of your mind any thought like, what if it doesn't get eaten? Did I cook too much? Did I cook too little? If you cook too much, then the food waste will go to the biogas. It's not even food waste. It, it will go back into the natural cycle through the biogas. And from there, that fertilizer will go back onto the land and into the kitchen for the energy. And what you do eat, probably most of it, that will go through and into the dry compost toilets and also back onto the trees, back into the land. So the human element in this cycle is actually helping to drive a cycle of abundance. There's no, you don't have to cook less. The sun is falling on, we look in the mirror, at the mirror, the sun is falling on the mirror. If we will cook with it, it will end up as environmental heat, which it does anyway. It will stop us freezing at night. If we don't cook with it, if we do cook with it, we can cook as much as you want. You, there's no, no need to save. And the same with the water. As long as we're not putting chemicals on ourselves and in the water, we're not damaging the water. So we can have, we've got solar collectors on the roof. We can have as many hot showers as we like. The water will come, run on us, and back into the earth. We have a so-called Scheffler mirror here. It escaped from Kleinwächter Laboratories some 30 years ago out into the wild where it's taken on an open source life of its own and where there are now tens of thousands of these mirrors around the world. It's got a piece of shiny stuff in the right shape. That's collecting the sun. Already I feel it quite hot here. It's bringing it down to a focal point below the cooking pot and down there there's a second mirror, a curved mirror that's bringing the heat, bringing the heat onto the base of the cooking pot. This is a functioning biodigester. At any time when you can have a bucket of water that you can put animal or human manure into, or lake mud, or any source of methanogenic bacteria, that is the bacteria that make you fart, this will begin to bubble. And it doesn't matter if it's just sitting there filled with water and manure, or whether you cover it, it's going to produce methane. It's just capturing that natural process, a process that also occurs in your own stomach, which is why I speak of farting, it's something we can all relate to. So you're building a stomach, but if the stomach is open to the atmosphere, you lose this valuable energy, this solar energy, which is really what microbes have extracted from leaves and flowers and all living material. The sun is embedded in the chemical bonds in the apple core, and the microbes will eat it, but when there's no air, they can't eat it efficiently, so they leave behind a very energy-rich molecule called methane. When the bucket is filled with water, there is no air at the bottom. So the microbes that live at the bottom are anaerobic, and they will bubble. Our task is simply to take another bucket and put it upside down on top, and then as the bubbles rise, when this is filled with water, this will rise. At some point, it'll tip over. But it will rise, and then if you want to use it, you put a hole in with a valve, and it goes down when you use it. And then the next day it rises, and then you use it, and it rises. Then the question is, how do I make it rise every day? So you put a pipe in to get food underneath, to feed the microbes that live here. And then when you do that, you're adding water, so it's going to spill over. And that can be messy. So you put another pipe here. And that's what you're looking at over here. You're simply seeing a feeding pipe that goes down to the bottom of this bucket. And then you're seeing a pipe coming out of the top of the bucket for the overspill and going into a container that has a pump. It's that simple. This is a 3,000 liter water water barrel, simply upside down. It has a valve here for letting the gas out, 
and it has water tanks, each containing 25 kilograms of water, so that we have 320 kilograms of weight because the gas wants to push up and we want it to go to the stove. So by putting 320 kilograms, we have enough weight to give a high enough pressure gas to go into the stove. You can use any stove for biogas. In Nairobi, they take a coffee can, they put stones in it as a flame spreader. They put a cap on it and put a hole here and stick a pipe in like this. And then when you light it, <laughs> now you've got a nice stove with decent flame height. And it doesn't matter if you have a coffee can or if you have a paint bucket. This is a simple paint bucket filled with stones with holes in the lid. The gas is on and when I light it, you can see there's your, your barbecue grill. Yeah. All right? Very cheap ways to do barbecuing. Or throw that on it. Let me wait till the gas pressure comes up. It should start in a second. There it goes. Now you've got a nice flame. Get something to put on it. And now you can cook. There is no reason to spend any money on a stove. Paint buckets or coffee cans work just as well. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it is my very great pleasure to present to you today a Sun Pulse 500. Wow. Right now, this one engine that we have, we've hooked it up as a reverse engine. So it's a fully reversible heat engine, and instead of delivering heat and cold to it and taking mechanical energy out, Right now, this particular one, we're delivering mechanical energy to it and taking heat and cold out. Jürgen, we have a cold box. If you've only got one engine, a photovoltaic panel generating electrical energy and driving your Stirling engine in reverse and giving yourself cold. So the more sun you've got, the more cold you've got. Perfect situation. During the night, no sun. It's anyway getting cooler. You turn your tap, you use the stored heat that you've collected during the day, and then you run your, then you run your selling engine forwards, and then you generate the electrical energy that you need during the night to run your lighting equipment from your stored hot water tank. Yeah, a beautiful situation for a community scale kitchen. This, in a way, is actually one of my personal favorites. It's not as small and cute as the new machine, but it's in, it is an incredibly simple thing. It's a, it, you can see it's from the same family. No, the, resemblance, the family resemblance is clear. It's a standalone water pump. It pumps water as long as you've got sunlight, fresh air and water to pump. You've, you've got your hot side of your Stirling engine. There it is, this top face. You've got the cold side of your Stirling engine. It's water cooled, it's a water pump, very easy. And in between you've got a drum of air held with held together with mild steel. Envelope Power Greenhouse 2010 model we have here. So what you see here on the south facing side of the greenhouse in this model there's Fresnel lenses and they're focusing the direct light that's entering the greenhouse onto black painted copper tubes which are also, they're, they're held in this white insulating shield. What, what would be waste heat in a greenhouse, far more heat than the plants need. Instead of spending energy to cool the greenhouse, we're simply taking that waste heat out of the greenhouse, ideally storing it, although right now the storage tank is also gone, and then using that to drive this engine and getting one and a half kilowatts electrical energy out. So our waste heat is actually turning into a a resource, it's a massive energy resource. It gives one a certain power and a certain feeling of like, I'm not, you know, I have less to apologize for. I'm not, I'm not trying to minimize the bad things that I do to the world anymore, but I'm showing really how, how is it possible for humans to live in a way where it's a joy to live in cooperation with, with, with nature and with each other.